They are tasted a vertical lineup of wines going back all the way to 1911. Yes, a 109 years old wine, an absolutely incredible experience. I'll tell you a lot more in just a minute. What is up guys, this is Julian the French wine making guy who makes wine videos here on YouTube, yes here on YouTube in wine videos. And this is episode number two of a wine trip I made a few months ago down the Loire River Valley of France. Today I'm taking you to discover absolute gems of French red and what wines that you should absolutely know about. Try to catch me howling at the So first we'll go in Vouvray where some of the best Chenin Blanc wines are made in the world. Kind of the homeland of Chenin Blanc. They make some still white wines and delicious sparkling wines there. And we'll also go in Cabernet Franc country, red wines in Bourgogne to be specific, where we'll learn how incredibly age-worthy and fascinating the red wines of the Loire Valley can be. They are quite affordable too for the quality that they offer. So this is a video for those looking for affordable gems and absolutely underrated wines. I'll also be meeting with local winemakers so we really get deep and understand what those wines are all about. Day two of my trip down the vineyards of the Loire Valley and around the area of Touraine, so that is near the city of Tours. And I've come from the Sauvignon Blanc of Sancerre that I explored yesterday down into the Chenin Blanc wine country. So Chenin Blanc is one of those extremely typical grapes that you find in the Loire Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've come here to this a family estate that has been established since 1702 here this well 1702 so well over 300 years now yeah. Yeah, yeah. Chenin Blanc it's a great variety that is not all that well understood including myself I haven't really got my head around Chenin Blanc and all the different styles of wines that it makes I have come here to meet with Pauline, uh, who is a young winemaker that has inherited the family tradition of making Chenin Blanc wines. To meet her, talk to her and try to get my head around and taking you with me. Pauline uh, Dumanche, owner and winemaker here at the Clos de l'Epinay in the heart of Vouvray. So Pauline has been taking over slowly, gradually from her father since 2016. So she's uh, learning from her father, taking all the tradition. What makes Chenin Blanc uh, so suited and so special for this place? Uh, Chenin Blanc is very uh, specific grapes and they really like limestone on clay. It's exactly the soil like oh. we have here. Limestone. Limestone. Like this. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were telling me before that Chenin Blanc just loves limestone even more than any other grape, yes. even more than Chardonnay. Yes, exactly. It's for that you have all, not all, but 
95% of uh, the Chenin Blanc in the Loire Valley in yeah. France. And limestone also allows Chenin Blanc to ripen at different levels, uh, making different styles of wines. Uh, so tell us about the different styles of wines that you have here in Vouvray. I was introducing already a little bit that you make some sparkling wines and still wines at different sweetness levels. Each year we can produce sparkling still wine also and in the still wine you can have dry, medium dry, sweet and very sweet wine. Mm -hmm. We can do the harvest later, late harvest, to produce very sweet wine if we have the good weather. When you pick early, the, the, the wines are going to be crisp and dry and, yes. and refresher aromatically. We all the time start to have the harvest uh, for the sparkling because we don't need a lot of sugar at the beginning. And after the dry, um, we wait uh, sometimes uh, one or two days uh, to produce medium dry. For the very sweet, we need to wait more. Yeah. Somewhat in a German style, I mean the Germans do, do it similarly with maturing grapes uh, gradually, leaving them out in the vineyards for longer and longer and that results in richer, richer wines with and very more, different more, wine. more yes. sweetness as well. I would yeah. remember and take away two things that uh, the sparkling wines are very uh, precise, they have a lot of minerality, a lot of freshness, more expressive, fruitier than in some other areas like in Champagne and a bit further down in Saumur uh, as well. So opulent, generous, very yummy uh, sparkling wines that are definitely worth uh, exploring. And then the steel wines it's a fascinating world uh, navigating across the different sweetness levels but what remains in the wines made from Chenin Blanc here in Vouvray is the precision, the finesse of the aromatic expression. After Vouvray, I went down the Loire River further down to taste and learn more about the red wines made from Cabernet Franc in Touraine. So again, this is near the city and around the city of Tours. It's kind of in the center of the long Loire River. I was higher up in Sancerre with episode one. I'll go further down in episode three. I was kind of in the center. Now for a background and where I'm coming from with Cabernet Franc. I've loved Cabernet Franc for a very long time. And that since I made some as a winemaker in Bordeaux of course, but I also made some fantastic wines from Cabernet Franc in Tuscany and in Australia. It's an amazing grape that somewhat has got the power and the concentration, the tannins of Cabernet Sauvignon, but with more acidity to the palate, it's got some floral notes of violet and more finesse overall. You have to know that Cabernet Franc is the backbone of some of the best wines in Bordeaux and other places, but also in Bordeaux, namely some of the best wines in Saint-Emilion that are, for example, Chateau Cheval Blanc or Chateau Ozone, and those are some of the most expensive wines in the world, so some pedigree here. Anyhow, what I learned in Bourgogne though, with this amazingly friendly vigneron that I met, a wine girl that is called Philippe Bouca of Domaine de l'Amé de Lille Bouca, is that Cabernet Franc wines from the Loire are not only excellent, they're fine and fruity and spicy, but they are also incredibly age-worthy. With Philippe in this stunning underground cellar dug, purely into the limestone rock. Oh, and you have to know that in this area, virtually every winery has an underground limestone cellar. Those not only highlight that here vines grow on the limestone rock itself, but they also provide the perfect conditions to refine and mature the wines. Wines are simply more subtle and more elegant when you taste them, when they have been matured, made, 
or aged in these humid and cold caves. So we tasted bottles from the 2018 vintage, nothing spectacular there, but all the way back to 1911 though, through 1976, 1971, 64 and 59. And they were all good and surprisingly fresh and vibrant. Because of their acidity and the vibrancy of their red berry characters, even the 1911 wine was you know mind-blowingly absolutely still looking red and fresh and vibrant in its color it was spicy it was deep it was earthy but still fruity uh, too as well in that 1911 wine you could still taste the grapes this wine was made from some 109 years ago i mean only wine allows you to travel back in time in such a way and only those really really fine wine and this tasting demonstrated for me that these wines from the Loire age pretty much just as well as the wines from Bordeaux. Needless to say that this is for a fraction of the price. So yes, it's they're less prestigious and fancy, but the value for money is just absolutely outstanding in Bourgogne and many of the Cap Francs that you can find for the, from the Loire are definitely worth looking into it. Now, of course, needless to say that visiting the area is also worth considering as it's so beautiful. You see in the next episode that there are loads of stunning chateaus, I mean, proper castles and things to do in the area as well. It's not only about wine, it's about the culture and having fun and exploring history and landscapes. Anyhow, back to our story. Next, I met with Denis Gambier, another local wine grower, another local vigneron, who gave me some more insights and secrets about the local wines and why the terroir is so special in Bourgogne. So here we are in the part of the Loire River. Uh, the Loire River is a, a, a very long region of area in France with many different wines. And uh, here we are in the heart of the Loire River where we make uh, only red wine from Cabernet Franc. And uh, so we are four, uh, mainly four appellations. Here is Bourgueil, just close together is uh, Saint-Nicolas de Bourgueil. In the other side of the Loire River, we have Chinon, and uh, a little bit further, we have Sommer Champigny. Right. And we all make uh, some red wine from Cabernet Franc. So in Bourgueil, uh, we have uh, two different special terroirs. We have the gravels, uh, the old bed of the Loire River, uh, where we make some fruity red, easy to drink. and. Um, a little bit uh, up to this uh, terroir. Mm -hmm. We are on the limestones, what we call here yeah. the tufo, yeah. uh, where we make heavy red uh, to edge mm -hmm. a little bit for longer. So there is uh, this kind of hillside with a bit of a divide with two different soils, very dynamic, two different types of uh, red wine. Very important for this area, we have uh, the, the caves uh, dug in the limestones. So we don't need any air conditioning. We have the, the, the same temperature all the time, a good humidity as well. So we'll, to have the, the edging in barrels or in, uh, in uh, the clay pots, uh, we have the, the, the always the good conditions. We, we, we like to separate with my brother the different terroirs and uh, to, to have the good edging according to the terroir. So it's why we, we edge uh, the wines from the gravels in tank and uh, the wines from the from the from the hill in uh, in the, barrels or clay pots. The limestone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it makes sense. So the the wine that grows on limestone ages on limestone. And that was it for me today in this episode number two on my road trip down the Loire Valley. If you haven't watched episode one about Sancerre and the homeland of Sauvignon Blanc, well, go and watch it right now as I think it's absolutely worth it. I talk to people that have been growing vines for generations and generations 
talking about the humble origins of Sauvignon Blanc wine in France, absolutely fascinating. I, I think, uh, or at least I thought it was absolutely fascinating. Now, if you've enjoyed this video to give me a little support, please share it with your fellow wine loving friends who might be interested in this and give this very video a quick blue thumb up to support my work as well. In the next episode, I'll take you further down the Loire River to learn more about the sparkling wines of Saumur, the Chenin Blanc wines of Anjou. So we're going to go deep, deeper into Chenin Blanc and finding some outstanding wines to explore. And we'll also taste the delicious crisp and dry whites of Muscadet. I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Au revoir, à bientôt. Thanks for the support, guys. Cheers. Uh, so Pauline has been uh, taking over. Uh, oh, on, so this is Pauline Vouvray. <laughs> Pauline Dumange. Oh, and you have to know that to 